Okay, you may want to uh, pause the video and take these definitions down, but we're going to look at electrochemical cells, which is where we basically uh, use the transfer of electrons from reducing agent to oxidizing agent by physically splitting the reaction into two uh, parts, which we call half cells. So have a look at these reactions. We know that only one of them occurs. Okay, we looked at this in, a, in the lesson three video. And we know that the reaction that actually occurs spontaneously is the second one. So let's put an arrow through this one. Uh, we know that this doesn't work. Um, and that the other one, the zinc, when added to a solution of copper two ions, will occur spontaneously and will yield uh, solid copper and a solution of zinc. So this type of cell is what we would refer to as a voltaic cell if we actually split the half reactions. All right. So what we're, what we're looking at when we discuss voltaic cells is how can we actually use this transfer of electrons as a form of energy? Okay, how can we use it to do work? So we're going to do this by separating this reaction into its half reactions, which we refer to as half cells when we physically do this. All right. Uh, so in the next video that we'll look at, we'll act, I'll actually show you how a voltaic cell can be assembled. So these are the reactions that actually occur. Okay, the reduction, uh, sorry, the oxidation and reduction. All right, you can actually go find these in the standard electrode potentials tables. So this is table 24 in the data booklet. Have a look, you can find both of these processes, but you'll notice that they're both written as reductions. Okay, it's because this table is often referred to as a standard reduction potential table. So you'll notice that all of the reactions are written as equilibria because they can occur both forwards and backwards. It kind of depends what they're paired up with as uh, well, determining uh, whether a reaction's an oxidation or a reduction. So we know from observation here that uh, the zinc will be oxidized and the copper will be reduced. All right, just some help with the actual table itself. Zinc has a greater tendency to lose electrons than copper does, so zinc gets labeled uh, it's E naught value, capital E with a little naught, as more negative. All right, so we'll have a look at this from a more specific point of view now. So you, off the screen, unfortunately, uh, I labeled uh, zinc as an oxidation, and below that you see copper is written as a reduction. I've taken the zinc and copper reduction lines from the standard reduction table, and I've just blown them up here for you. So what we say is that the uh, when we pair the half cells they can they generate what's known as an electromotive force or EMF this is essentially electrical pressure how hard do the electrons push All right, we refer to this as a standard cell potential E naught and the unit of this was volts so in order to determine uh, from literature values uh, the potential uh, a voltaic cell could generate, we use this formula here where we add the uh, cell potential of the oxidation half cell to that other reduction. Now you'll notice that the oxidation of zinc, you know, which we know occurs, isn't listed in the table. So we need to find the reduction line and we reverse it. When you reverse the uh, equilibrium reaction, you change the sign. So we go from negative 0.76 to positive 0.76 and we can see that this cell should generate um, a cell potential of 1.10 volts. Remember also that term standard means one molar solutions 298 Kelvin. 